here in Kazuko we have a, a whole range of different projects uh, that our scientists are running that uh, the students get involved in. The core projects that we have are um, amphibian and reptile monitoring, invertebrate surveys, bird abundance and diversity, so we have morning point counts and mist netting that's going on. And we also have uh, the same thing for, for bats, so we're doing mist netting in the evening for bats to monitor change in the bat communities. We have small mammal surveys, large mammal surveys, and a whole range of, of other specialist projects that are happening throughout the park all the time that, that change from year on year. One of the biggest projects that we have running though, um, kind of the most important for conservation, is our habitat surveys and assessments. So we are estimating carbon abundance and forest structure and type. That allows us to calculate the value of the, the carbon that's actually held in the park. So under Red Plus um, funding mechanisms, we can hopefully access funds that will then go directly to the community to fund sustainable development. The Dung Beetle Research in Kasuko has been running since 2006. Uh, this is a monitoring project that has been um, gathering the largest invertebrate data set in Central America. Um, we're doing this for two reasons. One, to look at uh, how dung beetles can act as indicators for larger um, animals. And secondly, to look at the ecology of dung beetles in such a uh, remote and interesting park such as this. The ecological studies that we'll get out of this are going to be unparalleled. We had a light trap on the first night and we caught these really huge moths that were like this big and a few jeweled scarab beetles which are actually only found in the park which was a really interesting thing to find and have kind of crawl over your hands. Chytrid fungus is a, uh, a disease that is impacting amphibian populations all over the world and causing mass declines in certain areas. One of the really nice things that we're able to do here is we actually set up a, a small DNA lab every summer and, uh, and that allows us to build up a picture of chytrid prevalence in the park, compare prevalence in different environmental conditions and then we can also compare between years to see what's going on over a, a time period. This um, past week in the forest, I mean, next week we're going to the coast. And I'd say I was looking forward to that, but this has really surprised me how, just how cool this last week has been. At the end of their first week, the school groups will move down to spend their second week learning a little bit about marine biology. Uh, they'll head to one of our two marine research centres, either Teller, which is a mainland bay in Honduras, or the small island of Utila. Uh, we use these two sites to really try and work on some of the big conservation priorities for the Caribbean, uh, particularly with the coral reefs in the area and some of the mangrove lagoons as well. During this second week, the school groups will complete one of a number of activities. A lot of them will learn to scuba dive with us. They'll complete their paddy um, open water uh, qualification, which is the entry level internationally recognised um, scuba qualification. They'll also get a chance to sit in some lectures and learn a little bit about the coral reefs that they're seeing. Uh, those that can already dive or would rather not dive will complete a, a more thorough coral reef ecology course. They'll get to go out, spend time with some of our science staff, learning a little bit more hands on about the species in the area. And generally, they'll also get a chance to get involved with some of the data collection, some of the key projects that we can really use the school groups that can be a massive help with 
for example, lionfish dissecting, where we go and we spearfish lionfish that are an invasive species in the area, bring them back to shore. The school kids help dissect them to collect morphological, physiological data, look at gut content analysis and things like that. And also help with a project where we bring sea urchins up and we weigh them and we take measurements from them and then re-release them to give us an idea of how their populations are faring after a, a mass mortality outbreak um, about 20, 30 years ago. One of the key things about coming out here is that if you've got a passion for coral reefs and you're stuck back in the UK or the US or Canada or wherever it is you may be, um, we don't have access to this kind of environment. Uh, and I think individuals who are coming here really, really benefit from it. It gives them access to this world that they wouldn't otherwise have access to. Thank you.